So uh, thank you for being on time. Um, it's amazing the power of Stephen Barlett, isn't it? Um, everyone's back very promptly, um, but we're not seeing him just yet. We've got another, another quick session to do. Um, and this one is, um, again, we've talked a lot about teams. Um, and one of the big questions that we get asked is, well, should I really start a team? You know, do I really want to have the pressure of having a team, but do I, do I want to stay as I am? And there's loads of questions that go around people's heads about whether they want to start a team or not. So um, we're going to be introducing um, four guys to stage um, and the great debate to team or not to team. Now, this, uh, this specimen here is Ali Harper. He has a team, but he's going to be moderating this session. Um, Jane Whitfield, the lovely Jane, she's got a team, loves it. Aaron Tonks is on the fence about having a team. Andrew Pearson, who's the birthday boy today, by the way, uh, he doesn't want a team. So this is a proper sort of debate as to try and help you to decide whether you want to have a team or not to have a team and the pros and cons of that. So please welcome those guys to the stage. And I'll leave you in Ali's capable hands. Back in a bit. Thanks, guys. Well, well holy hell, look at the view. <laughs> no pressure. Right, so obviously, it's, it, we'll cut the chase really quite quickly because we've got Stephen Bartley coming up. And whilst it's an honour to be Stephen Bartley's warm-up act, <laughs> we're going to debate whether we should run a team or not. And from my perspective, it's probably the question that everyone's... There's a number of people in the audience yesterday and today that have been asking about, tell us more about teams, whatever. So today, this session here is going to be really good about... And I was sitting on the fence going, no, Aaron is, Aaron's kind of the, let, let's call him the, 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 the kind of neutral party here because I'm very much for teams. Jane's very much in teams because we're running active teams right now. Andrew's fiercely against it. So I'm going to be gentle on him because it's his birthday. But, and then Aaron's on the fence. So it'd be interesting to see at the end, once we have a bit of a debate about it, is Aaron going to do this or not? So, <laughs> no, <laughs> so no pressure. But, I guess the best, the, the best place to start, I guess, when you launch a team is at what point do you start a team? So let's get an idea right now of where everyone's teams are, uh, where everyone's businesses are, sorry, like right now. So we'll kick off with you, Jane. Tell us, what is, tell us about your business right now, but briefly, but numbers. How big is your pipeline? How many units you got available? Okay. Team size, so, et cetera. So I've currently got a team of two agents. One's only just got going. One's been going since January. Um, our current on the market is around 26, I think. Um, under offer is about 32. Pipeline's about 176 from when I last looked. And that's your team. That's not just Jane. That's, that's the whole that's your of team. us, yeah. And what's your team called? Just Jane Whitfield Bespoke Jane Estate Whitfield. Agents okay, okay. <laughs> at the moment, yeah. Aaron, what does your business look like today? So we're looking like 120k pipeline. We've got just above 36, 37 available at the moment with eight pre-market. And we've got just over 60 under offer. And it's just me and the wife at the moment. Okay, okay. Okay, so that's, for me, that sounds very similar to where I was when I was about to launch my team, or why I wanted to look for teams. But for me, it was like, right, I was like that. Now, where's the next level of growth? Andrew, tell us what your business looks like now, though. Takes a bit of beating, Aaron. Um, yeah, I've got 39 properties I'm managing at the moment, um, 10 live and 29 under offer. Uh, pipeline's at 101,000. That's uh, a solid business then. Um, but I've, been, I've not been at 100 for long, but I've consistently had a pretty good pipeline over the last three years. Uh, and I've probably been in a position where I could have set a team up, but I've decided not to. You've decided not to. So yeah. that's the big question. Yeah. So let, let's, let's, let's kind of reverse this back a bit then. So tell me... I tell, tell these guys here, really, why not then? Why not take this to the next level? Why not push on from the 100 and go for 200, 250? I'm happy. <laughs> well, that was easy. Uh, but seriously... <laughs> Debate over. Not, well, it's true. Like, Shit, it's make it challenging, why, Andrew. Well, Give us why, something why, to kick you in the nuts about. The way I look at it, you get to a point in life, why complicate your life? Um, I've got a good standard of living. I've got a good network of agents that I sponsor. I'm happy, I've got on the whole a pretty good work-life balance. I've been a self-employed agent now for eight years, four with Purple Bricks, which taught me a lot. Um, and I had 21 people as a territory owner, self-employed at Purple Bricks. And believe you me, once you've done that, you're a little bit reluctant to start operating teams. So maybe just scarred from too many battles, too many wars. And I plan on taking the whole of August off 
Um, I'm, so why not start a team and get someone to look after the business while you're away? I, I'm fine. Like, I just share that, look, I've got a great network of people where I live, yeah? So a lot of those people have kindly put me down as sponsor. So if I get valuations, I can't do them, I just give them to somebody else. We just, we work together, do you know what I mean? What's the, for me, I just, it's not something I, I need in my life. Okay, so on a serious note. So, so on a serious note, though, when, yeah. when, when Teams was announced, and we'll, we'll work backwards here, so I'll start with you then, Jane. Why, what research did you do into Teams? What did you look at? What, what information was available to you? That oh, we know the decision is you be, you became a team leader mm. or launched a team, but what Why? before you said Adam, I'm doing this. What did you know about it? What did you what did you um, learn? Not a lot. I knew it was on the cards. I knew for me the thing that kind of drew me straight away was that I knew I'd get my own brand on Right Move. I know that sounds very sort of vacuous, but it does work a little bit. And I then sort of just looked into it, and and I think for me. I'm of a certain age, believe it or not, where I'm heading nearer 60 than 50. And um, I see it as my exit plan. It's my way to step back. But, and again, so I'd say research, going back to research and stuff, so I could go, start going off on tangent. But um, so, yeah, just, just Adam had been giving us a heads up. We knew it was coming in. Um, a lot of the very early adopters of Teams, we've kind of made it up as we go along a little bit, haven't we? We've all been like liaising together on WhatsApp and trying to work it out. And then I went to Vegas and then I really saw it. And then I got to speak to people like Craig Lepage, and some of the other big leaders, and when they go, oh, yeah, I've got about 300 in my team, and you're like, what? They're all getting 25%, and they're basically choosing what level of business they personally do. So that, that for me, was another big game changer, really, was actually when I could see the bigger picture in America. So, so why teams then, Jane? Like, what, what's, are you doing this for money? Are you doing this to help people? Exactly. Yeah. So the money is exactly not why I was doing it. I always did what everyone else in this room probably set out to do, which is I'm just going to run a really good estate agency, show them how it's all done, do it for my dining room table and not overcomplicate this. But then I think Lee said it earlier, um, you don't come this far to stand still. And when I'm being... Yes, Andrew. <laughs> Andrew. Yes, uh, Andrew. So, and I, I didn't see it as a, oh, I must earn more money. I see it more as a, and, and this is, again, get the buckets out, um, a little bit of the whole reason, another big reason for me starting as an agent was to bring back the sort of proper estate agency. You know, we're all sick of how a lot of agents behave, and I wanted to bring that back. And by doing teams, I can replicate that or guide people to replicate exactly what I've done in my area very quickly, but kind of multiply them and then walk away and go to my care home and go, I did my bit. Yeah. It's kind yeah. of where I'm at with it. Okay, okay. And then Aaron, obviously, you're on a fence at the minute. So right now then, sitting here, what do you know about teams and why... I, I guess don't give us a complete answer on whether you're going to do it or not, but what's going through your mind right now as you're sitting in the fence? So for me, when Teams was introduced and when we first heard about Teams, it's not what or why I set out to do the business that I'm in. I, I joined EXP to be a self-employed agent, to be a bespoke estate agent and, and to make a difference in what, what I want to do. Um, so Teams to me sound very corporate -y. didn't know anything about it, didn't research it because... How I look at it, it's not about the positives, the pros, cons. It's just, is it relevant to me, my business? Is it the path, the journey I want to go on? And quite frankly, no, it wasn't. Then the more I sat, the more I talked, the more I saw teams, the more I kind of went down the journey and had a look through what the pros were, you know, and the cons. It's kind of, that's why I'm still on the fence at the moment, because it's not, the reason we, I do this it isn't financial. It's more the freedom of life. And I work for a corporate, never, ever would I do it again. So when I first heard Teams, I thought, oh, shit, EXP are going corporate. What do I do? Um, so, no, it, it's, it's, that's why I'm on the fence. It's just not, not quite going. It's not quite what I want that I know of, if that makes sense. Gotcha. So, okay, then. So pros and cons. Give us a quick few pros in your mind, a yeah. few cons <clears throat> in your mind, and then. We'll see if Andrew's Some of the positives, the and I'll shout out Sam Cerrone on this one because she mentioned it earlier as well. The key for me, pros of a team, you do get your own right move channel, which then differentiates the, the marketing standard for my local. So where I am, EXP is known. 
and then there might be four you know exp agents and the marketing standards not the same as what i would produce or must you know me and sarah would produce so i don't want people to say oh exp look how the market houses i want it oh look at our Aaron tonks market houses exceptional so that's a big big positive for me negative i just like you i'm happy i'm very very happy with the quality of life and i just i don't think i could be bothered to I've got people. Got you. But then you know I'll mean? challenge that though, because if you're looking for something, it means you're not happy. There's something missing then, because you're not good looking for something if your current state is cool. If you're not happy yeah. with your current, like you're not looking for this, but you're here to be persuaded that you should start a team in about 20 minutes' time. But <laughs> I just, I give in. No, I, I, no, I, I, we're not going to challenge you that hard. But what I mean is, some things me, and I'm not, I, I, I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not going to dig into your brain, but at the same point, there's something making you look. You only look up. You only look over the fence because mm, I wonder what it's like. So, yeah. do you have like? Are you like like? Where Andrew's very much like, I'm happy where I am. I'm happy with 100 grand pipeline. I'm taking August off. I'm happy to just coast like this for the next five, 10, 15 years, whatever. The business that's, where you're—that's a problem I've always had. <laughs> you, you, oh, no, actually, you're quite old now. How old are you now? It's your birthday, today, isn't it? I've got a big birthday next year. That's all. So you're 49. Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> so, I'm very, very. That was a, that was a crap answer. Oh, I'm 49. Right. So, but, but, but what I mean is, like, Aaron, what's your five year plan then? Is it to, do you want the, if I said to you in five years' time, your business is going to look exactly the same as it is today, will you be happy? Absolutely. Right, fine. Okay, so that's, that, that's a good answer then. That's not the answer I wanted, mate. But... <laughs> <laughs> no, because, listen, well, I'll, the reason I've started a team is is because I wanted to keep on growing. Like if, it, all the jobs I've had over the years and where I am now, I want to keep going further and further and further. And I, I do respect Andrew. That is not your goal. You don't want to be like that. But for me, it was more. Yeah, there's financial gain, but that financial gain, to, to, I guess, to kind of touch on that when you start a team. I start. I was the first one to go live with a team. Was it last August? Yeah. I'll tell you now. The income's still shit. I'm not getting any money from it yet. But you're really persuading me now. No, 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 but, <laughs> no, no. But what, 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 what I mean is, let, let, let's dispel any myths. Just because you start a team today doesn't mean that your, your income suddenly go up next month. That's not the case. It's a it, to be to be clear and in, in, in being honest about it. It's probably an eighteen to twenty-four month transition before you start to think. Right now, I'm making coin from running a team. Now there is growth. But as far as I was talking to this to some people yesterday about this. Where my growth or where I know my team is moving in the right direction is because my board invoice has tripled. My, the number of units in my pipeline, I always sat as, as Alston Harper or Ali Harper EXP, my pipeline usually sat about 35, 40 units. I've like a pipeline of like 60 to 65. Now they're not monetizing yet, but at the same point, my business is getting bigger and that's what I wanted. I wanted more I wanted Harp, because my business is now called Harper's Property People. And I wanted more people to know about Harper's Property People. So when I launched my business, day one as Alistair Harper or Andrew Pearson, whatever, I was just, I was running whatever I can. I'll do, I'll take any, any, any phone call, any listing, I'll, I'll go there. But now I've become hyper local in Bedlington. I've got towns around me where I think, right, if they call me, they're not going to get the same service. So I need someone to go there. So it made sense for me. What's the answer to that? And I sat down with Adam, a lot of us sat down with Adam day one and said, right, how do we scale this? Chris Abraham, he spoke with this. When was Chris on? Was it yesterday? Chris spoke with this and said, where's the next bit? Whereas you, Andrew, you haven't hit that ceiling. You're like, well, I'm happy where I am, but I needed something more. I needed someone in around me in teams with EXP. It gives me that where, because mm. I, I, my business is where it is because I, I remained hyper local. And then I need someone over there, over there, over there. And I have... The, the problem is, Ali, I've, I've done too good a job on RevShare. Um, Carlisle, where I live, is literally, I'm not going to say saturated, but we've got five very, very good estate agents in the city that I live. Uh, we've got Mark Buchanan, about 30 miles away, Ian Rose. So you kind of look at it and you think, right, we put some more people in a team, but I think I've got all the good people. I know there's always good people, but we are at that point where how much further can we grow EXP? Because we're by far and away in my area, market good leader by a, by, a, by a big... You've got it wrapped up. So that's a, listen, I can't argue with that. That's, that's a fair point. But 
for, for, you know, for the audience, not, not everyone's in the situation where they've got the world's number and agent at the end of the road. Yeah. It's more about the, you know, from the team's perspective, it, if you're not missing, and you're clearly not missing anything under like, and, and I mean that with, with the greatest respect, you, you're happy where you are. You're not, you're not seeking the next paycheck or the next avenue of growth, but there will be people out here thinking, right, is teams right for me? And this is really what today is about is, yes, th there will be financial gain, but you're not going to get it tomorrow. It will come, but the growth is there. And I want you to shoot me down with some figures. So, okay. Um, you are going to absolutely tear me a new one, aren't you? With Go this. for it then. But I, I kind of just look at it and I think from a business perspective, I, I look at it at profitability and how much money I get out a year um, right. and to keep my overheads down as, as low as possible, which was the beauty of setting up with the XP in the first place. So I look at teams. I think to really make it work, I think you probably need to be looking at five years to get probably where you need to be, where you can literally take your foot off the gas. To get to there, you've got to get administrators, sales progressors, people to do your viewings. There's an awful lot of in infrastructure you've got to put in place to enable you to do that. And the costs you incur then, because those people are they self-employed, are they employed? I know it's been mentioned quite a few times with, with different people. So for me, that's kind of the big thing. It's profitability. Yeah, ego-wise, I don't care whether I've got my name on uh, right move. Is it going to make me any more money? No, it isn't. I've got enough valuations to go at. I don't think I'll ever be in a position, touch wood, where I'm having a battle for, for, for business. So that's kind of where I'm at. Profitability, where, what, how's that looking? What? Okay. So, we, Jane, you go first then. Uh, so, yeah, I get that. Um, and I would say that, yes, I've put a lot of in infrastructure in. Anyone thinking about teams, that's definitely the thing I took away from Vegas was get your infrastructure in behind you first and then you can push forward. So I have got, a, but I, I got, I mean, God, I must, I must have been hitting nearly 90 to 100,000. So pretty much exactly where you were before I took that next step to now be 170 something. You... In order to do that, I needed the sales progressor. I needed the admin lady. I would have had them anyway. They, I now also have another part-time person. I'm not just on the verge of maybe taking another negotiator, like a paid negotiator on, just to do viewings and the general, you know, again, just to help with the general stuff. But the whole reason is that's giving me the opportunity to sit back a bit more. I couldn't have ever, I, I'm a terrible workaholic. I'm a nightmare. I got a puppy to try and stop me working so much the other week. But... I need to step back and if I and I can't I can't do this till I'm 65 and just run myself into the ground. So the only way to do that is to put an infrastructure in place, someone behind you. But yeah, the cost is there, but I've actually probably gained more business from having those people in place, if that makes any sense. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. So you're assuming I'm building a team for me to exit. I love what I do. Yeah. And I and is I I'm the best list that I know. You haven't I, met me yet, son. Yeah, but, <laughs> but, but what I mean, I mean, I mean, what I mean is, I'm not building a team for me to slow down. I'm I'm running at 150 mile an hour, listing listing my tits off, <laughs> but I can't do it there, 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 and there. But cost. Let's talk about profitability. So, my mum's my administrator, right? I pay her. I can't. I, I won't go through the numbers, but she she gets roughly about 900 quid a month, and what she does. For my, for my team, the same entire team, there's three listers. There's me, Emma, and Don. She does my AML, like all AML's done. She sends all the contracts. Her number's on right move. So they're not calling me, they're calling my mum. <laughs> right? <laughs> they don't know it's my mum sometimes, but I say, oh, you spoke to my mum. Family business. Da, da, da. Um, but they get my mum booking viewings, and that's done. So if you want to join my team, We've got a viewing handler. My wife's the progressor. She's not, she, we own the business 50-50. So as far as staff costs, mm. my only uplift is, yeah, my board's gone up. My professional photography's gone up. But that's, I'm, that's good news though, isn't it? Yeah. I'm paying for more boards, means my mm. Harper's is out there more. So with the good respect, Andrew, that's a shit argument because I'm, I'm not. <laughs> but, but I, the profitability. I also, no, no, hang on, hang on. You've, you, you've touched on a very important point there. So your business kind of runs in sync with my friend Mark Buchanan's business and it's family involved. What if you had to bring in people that weren't family? And you... That's what Jane's point though is. So that's, what, that's why it's good to have me and Jane on the stage. 
Apart from Kate. Aaron. Apart mine's from different Caitlin, to Jim's. <laughs> I've got You're one just family member. You're just leaving me to a sinky, right? Yeah. <laughs> I sat, no, but, I oh, I'm, I'm coming, I'm coming to Aaron in a minute. But you, <laughs> you, asked, you asked the question because, you know, we've been joking about this. And you've been saying, Ali, I want to get into profitability. But it, I, I held a bit back from you when we were speaking out, the, out there to say, my overheads haven't really gone up. Mm. My team's getting bigger. My brand is getting bigger. I've got people that want to come in that don't have the minerals to go and be an EXP or on their own. They don't have the drive. And, you know, let's call it a spade a spade. I think to go and do what we did or what I did three years ago with Tony, you know, and, and all these people out here, you've got to really back yourself and go for it. But I genuinely believe if you're good enough to go and do it on your own, you shouldn't be in a team. And I mean that, that might, people might disagree with that, but I don't want five of me in the business because it'll be absolute, <laughs> it'll, it'll be carnage. But that, but it's, it's the people that say, well, I want to, like the, if, I, if I speak about who Don and, and, and MR, M, MR for a minute, they both have experience in, in the industry, but they, they came to me and said, listen, we're not as, we look at what you're doing and you know, we've been doing this for goodness knows how long. And when, when we can't compete with you, but I want to learn how you do it. And I think it was Sam Sullivan, the stage history. I can't remember the question she asked, but she was asked, but she was like, well, I don't want people to argue with me. My girls don't argue with me. They're like, well, show us the way then I'll. And Christian, just before us, I can't remember exactly what it was, but I meant to write the notes down, but I didn't. He was like, he wants to help people and he wants to set the example. So I'm, I'm, I'm pleased to be setting the example of where I am. And the fact that I've got people coming to me to say, I want in, I want part of that. It's not really cost me anything to have them in the business, but it, sorry, I think there's another side of it as well, which I think because you've had bad, well, bad but experience in running a team, but as a manager, I think the difference to me is I've put in place a team behind me that are my admin staff, but they're also my training staff. So my new agents, and um, I'll say that my two current agents are both people that have only been able to start with the XP because they have joined my team. They are not experienced estate agents, but they are both going to absolutely smash it. One is already. One's only just got started, so I'll give her a chance. But they come out and shadow me. So I'm not changing my workload massively. I'm just doing what I do, and then they'll have a day with my sales progression, they'll have a day with my admin lady, or two or three or four, they'll have a, a day with Caitlin to set up social media and all that side of things, and they're kind of organically learning it. And I'm not, the idea for me is not to manage them, it's for them to follow my lead and replicate what I do, but in areas where I got to the point where I couldn't possibly take the business anymore. I mean, what do I do? Charge 5% and then you know, just or just walk away from it. So I didn't want to not be able to offer the service we offer, and a lot of us fantastic agents do. So that, that's, but like I say, it doesn't have to be a big management role. It can be integrated into what you're doing already. And just with, with the workload for me, the, the thing for me is I like to do absolutely everything within the business like Sarah does. Valuations is what I do. I love it. We're, we're fully booked for months in, in advance. We've got 20 to 40 valuations every month that we attend. And, and for me, I appreciate a team would potentially alleviate some of the stresses because it is stressful, but that's why I do the job. I absolutely love it. And for me, I wouldn't change a single thing for the, you know, for the world. And to provide what I provide, a service element that we provide, I just felt a team wasn't, wasn't quite there for me. But after listening, Looking at the pros, cons. We're converting them. It's, He's coming. I'm nearly. But for me, I, I genuinely feel the only positives I can get from a team is my own right move channel and, and people come to me. And that's the only positive I can see at the minute. All right, we're losing them. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> no, but no, I'm, I'm conscious we've done a lot of talking now. And I, I don't know, I want to bring you in because I think, in fairness, you're probably the most important person on the stage because I reckon most people out here are like, do I or do I not? So tell me then, if I had a magic wand or Adam had, uh, Adam had a magic wand, what's missing from this now for you to say, right, I'm going to launch a team. Adam, I want to speak to you tomorrow. Let's get the right move profile set. What, what's missing from that? If I knew that, I'd probably have a team. Um, no, but, the, but what I mean is, but, well, let me rephrase that. What's stopping you to do a team right now then? I think it's the unknown, the uncertainty. And for me, because I am, as you say, very, very happy in the place that we're in at the minute with the numbers, the level that we're doing. 
and I don't like saying no to people. So me not being in front of that vendor client, it would kind of hurt me a little bit because knowing that Mr. Smith, who's my team member, is going out to do it, that's how I look at it. So I've probably got the perception of the team wrong, but I joined EXP as Aaron Tonks, the property guy. It was allowed then. Um, <laughs> so it's hard. So me and Sarah, the wife, what we do, oh, oh, I don't want to change, but I can see why team is beneficial, but I can also, it, it's, it's a scary thing starting something new. You know, when I launched the business four years ago, it was it was very difficult time, you know, leaving a corporate agent, guaranteed salary to, to absolutely nothing. So a team for me, having more people in the background, I just don't know what to do with it. That's a fair point. Is there anything else you guys want to see or shall we, I think it's, there may be some questions out in the, the masses. You're still not going to run a team. I get it. But listen, at the end of the day, and I, can, I think I speak for everyone else who's running a team just now in EXP, everyone had their own reasons. Some people just want to step out. For me, it was about, I need more bodies to service the leads for the business. And I, I because of where I am in my hometown, I, can't, I don't have the time to go and do what I did in that town there or that, because the business has grown so big on my doorstep, hyper-local. So, is there anyone got any questions that, with regards to teams or thinking about running teams? Who have we got here? Ben, you go first, you're, you're right in front of us. So I know you're gonna ask a good question. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, Come gotcha. On. Yeah, is it okay? Um, it's Aaron, pro probably like, in fact, I've got, I've got a question for both of you guys actually, but, but Aaron, I'll start with you. Like in terms of like finding the benefits and, and I guess right move being the only main benefit to you going into a team setup. Do you not think there's like a massive net benefit in terms of you being able to reduce the waiting time that customers have to wait to work with your business, getting people in quicker, converting those people quick, and not, not just in terms of the monetary value in terms of getting the listing pipeline up, but improving that consumer experience. I mean, it's very nice that they're willing to wait months to work with you, but would it not have a, a net improvement on the perception of your brand to be able to service those people quicker? And yeah, sorry, mate, well, I like you. I was gonna go straight into his question, but I'd be intrigued to know what you're gonna. Of course, anything that goes faster would be more beneficial to the client, but we, we have a standard five day turnaround from when the pictures are taken to launch. If the clients are happy to wait, which 99.9% .9 are because they, they're employing me, Aaron and Sarah as their agent, the brand they already know, uh, touched on it earlier on. They've already seen what we can offer them, what we can do from social media. So for me, they're employing us for that reason. So, yeah. It's, I, it's, I still think they'll get that magic and buy into you, even if it's like they've got a different think, account yeah. manager personally, mate. Yeah. But, but yeah. Yeah. because they're underestimating how much power that has. Yeah. 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 They, they're quite happy to accept um, me saying, oh, my colleague covers Melksham now. I'm just sticking with Corsham in the local area. Unless they very specifically say, I really wanted you, Jane, I'm just one postcode. Um, yeah, I mean, yes, yeah. they are more than happy because they know that the people that are working with me as my partner agents are still very much led by me and our ethics and our morals as well. And the way you do business, they'll just replicate that. My phone still rings now and I'm saying, well, actually my business partner, Emma, or my business partner, Don, and don't bat an eyelid yeah. because like my phone, like off Facebook, people are calling me for business, but I'm like, well, you're calling Harper's now. And you change, you, all you do is change the language and it's the business owners, a uh, business partner, sorry. Ben, and, yeah, Andrew. And, and sorry, Andrew, like last one for you, I mean, I get what you're saying. Like you said, I'm, I'm happy and that like sums everything up, but I know that you've had success or revenue share and a big part of your future is going to be, well, I want to expand and build on that yeah. and it's more passive. And, and obviously I'm very much in that boat myself. I'm tempted towards teams a little bit and I've been out of production for a while because I'm thinking, well, if I can get myself a, a little hub and bring people around, have more of a community in my area, more of a local focus, there's maybe a little podcast studio in there. It's more attractive to bring more agency. Maybe I could even better support the people who are in my market yeah. locally, not just on my team directly. There could be a huge net benefit, null of whatever it might do in terms of my sales side of the business. So do you not think for your deeper goal of revenue share, teams could play into that and, and kind of help you with that mission? Potentially, um, I think it's time. You get 20 seconds. If I just answer it. 
Are you that aggressive Scotsman that nearly knocked <laughs> out uh, knocked out Adam? I, 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 <laughs> revenue share is probably my kind of ticket to some form of retirement, but I, I don't think teams is is the right way to go to get there. Fair play, fair play. Thanks, Andrew. Right, we've got to go because the most important man is coming. Just went. Right, thanks, guys.